Thanks, Mick. I'm glad I wasn't on that bus. And I guess that's why in the early days they travelled on trains. You never run into a B-double if you're on a train. There must have been some great yarns of the, the train trips back in the day. We moved to uh, the era when Ducky Do won their next grand final. And whilst Tom Yo and the current coach Brad Beshman are coming forward, can I ask you to stand up if you were a coach or a captain in any grade with Dunny Do. Men, women, anyone that's been a coach? Norm Barr, who was mentioned in 1968, and Dry, and a lot of those guys put it the, the, together for them. They're the ones that would be on the phone. I bet they're glad that there was no mobile phones in those days. But they'd have to try and get the teams together. And we've heard yarns tonight of pulling people out of the pub on a Friday night. I would ask you if you've ever been seen me, but there'd be too many of you, so we won't do that and send-offs we've heard a bit about those tonight, suspensions we've heard about, and maybe amongst yourselves you can talk about what the longest suspension is in the number of matches. Tom Yo, 2014, local boy, went to Dubbo to play juniors with Dubbo Sims with his mate Tom Vesco, then came back and wanted to give back, and here he is today still playing, and the current coach, Brad Beshman, has realised that Denman is not the centre of the universe, but Dunny Do. So congratulations. Thanks, Jeff. I didn't know how to give a speech till last week when Matty Court said, uh, so you're going to give a speech? <laughs> so what about? So thanks, Gordy. But uh, it's been great to hear the, the stories from the previous eras. Um, obviously the Gallagher's a massive part of my life. Uh, I remember Ronnie Gal being my coach as a, as a junior, league, junior league player and I still blame him today for my poor kicking game because every time we got to the last tackle he'd just tell me, RUN IT! RUN IT! <laughs> so I never got a chance to kick, that's why I'm a terrible kicker. But, um, yeah, my time, I've, I've been in Daniel my whole life, obviously moved away uh, the last few years but um, you know, my time coming up is still filled with memories of, of the Gallagher's. Um, you know, Juicy, Abby, uh, Magpie and Crow, uh, Spuzz, Dale, like people, like these guys are saying, Spud, uh, Chris Carney, Mick Inder, Cole Roberts, uh, The Sullivans, Danny Miller, Brindle, Big Whack, uh, you know, Dale Holden. And one of my favourites, Toddy Gow. When I was a kid, he was always my favourite. He's the good one. Uh, so we're going to get the podium today, actually. Still got it. Um, you know, outside of, that, outside of those guys, you know, hearing about the, the previous players, the previous series, uh, you know, I used to hear stories from Dad uh, about those guys. You know, it was Ronnie Gow, um, you know, David Abbott, uh, Rick Trithan, we heard from earlier, uh, Peter Holmes. Uh, Mouse, that's our work mate, so it's, it's great to hear those guys uh, be mentioned as they were tonight. Um, you know, being a kid after after first grade games, being back at the, uh, you know, we, we're, just, we're just keen to go and watch the senior leaguers when we were more kids. A lot, of my, a lot of my mates here today that we I played footy with since I was you know, five, you know, back at that bottom pub, and the, the presentation, the parents had put us out in the side room where the pool table was, give us hot chips, and you used to just look across and just, you know, you just want to be in the bar area with all the footy players and in there telling lies and drinking beers. It's like it was, it's all you wanted to do, all you wanted to do when you were a kid. Um, you know, I was, back in those days, when you wanted to get our coach, you know, he had us, my sisters and he and I as well, we were the, I was a sand boy, I was a ball boy, um, I was a team mascot, I think I ran the boys out a few times, I was, I was a water boy, I remember one game um, when Ronnie coached, I can't remember where the game was, but they, I got to run the water, and I ran the water on there, and uh, I remember running the water on and I'd give some water to Chris Carney, and uh, Chris Carney told me when I gave him the water, he said, Tommy, every time you come on, you make sure you bring me the water first, every time. <laughs> I thought I was special, but I realised he was just unfit, you know. <laughs> um, you know, when, you, when you were young, you know, the, 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 you know, footies, you know Saturdays are for footy, you know, the footy players be your idols, and I love nothing more than tonight and sit back there and hear these stories from, from previous years. 
you know, walking past the, the dressing sheds when you were a kid, you'd walk past, you just want to look in there, you couldn't quite see, but you just smelled dank corrupt for days. And, uh, it smelled like a roast dinner, you know, it was all was what he was all about. Um, and like Mick said earlier, you know, it's, you know, I was that young kid once and, and now there's young kids now that um, and the same thing, you know, walk past those sheds and they want to be in the sheds and they want to be involved, so, you know, it's, it's full circle, you know. I, uh, you know, full circle, you know, same deal, you know, I got to coach by, when I was a kid, Ronnie Gallagher and Addy and all those guys coached me coming up, so, um, yeah, full circle, but, um, you know, I sort of, I came across, I played a year in 2010, I was living in Sydney, came back, played then, and, uh, it's familiar faces, you know, like my best friend, you know, these days, you know, Mark Stanford, two players, you know, we're best friends for life, get an opportunity to come back and play with those guys through those, through that, through that time. Um, you know, different coaches throughout and um, just kept the club going, you know, uh, through those years. Uh, obviously, I, I moved away after that. Um, you know, 2013, I think, I, the, 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 someone was supposed to coach uh, and he, he pulled out late and, uh, I don't know, it was probably Juicy, I think, that rang me or, or, or if Mark Gow said, listen, does the coach has pulled out, do you want to coach? And it's something I want to do from, from a kid, from a, from a young age and get the opportunity, I was like, I just jumped at it. I didn't quite know what I was getting myself into, uh, but I couldn't wait to do it. Um, the 2013 season rocked up, like I said, uh, you know, my mates that, you know, well, I used to watch the footy with when we were kids, you know, five or six, seven, Marky Stanford, Flippo, Cookie Large, um, and that, that, those guys were all there ready to play. Uh, so it was pretty, of course I was going to coach. And Tommy Baz, um, and that time too, you know, Matty Court, uh, Tyson Sell, those guys were, you know, they'd been going there for a couple of years and they're still there today. And without those guys, there probably wouldn't be a footy club now. You know, the recruitment and stuff that they did, you know, it's, it's pretty special, pretty important. But, you know, Tommy Baz, um, you know, uh, O'Malley there, a lot of boys, Chappie, one of my favourites, mate. Uh, Wanted to come back and play with Chappie. A lot of these guys were older than me when I played junior league. In that 13 season, um, yeah, we probably we probably thought we had the side to win the comp. And when we, when we played good footy, um, up and down uh, throughout, you know, got to that semi against Gilgandra, and um, oh, you know, I think we were like, like I said, we probably thought we were favourites, and we fell a bit short, and I, you know, I was I was pretty devastated after that. Uh, and I was like, ah, oh, you know, I'm a bit of a soup, so I was like, ah, oh, I'm not playing footy anymore. Fuck footy, you know, oh, I didn't want to play footy anymore. Sorry for swearing. Um, and then Jersey, he managed to run, and he said to me, and he grabbed me, and he said, he, we're at the Gilgandra Hotel, and good sports, went back there for a beer, and he said, just look around, mate, look, look around, look at, the, look at this team, you know, look what we're building. Um, you know, you, you, you can't quit, you've got, you got, you got to do it again. And I, I always remember that, uh, Judy say that, and, you know, I, I probably came to my head, you know, you'll lose one, you win one. Um, you know, so I went, went in again in 2014, and, you know, I, Dan couldn't wait. And, uh, yeah, we had a, had a few few new, play, few new players then. I went on, um, yeah, my best mate to this day too, uh, Chrissy Walkham. So he was a first phone caller, mate, said, Chrissy, you know, if I'm going again, need you, mate, need you to come play. And obviously, uh, another great mate of mine, Joshy Walkham. Um, Benny Bruce came across that year, and uh, one of the, one of the, well, probably one of the best players that year too, Ryan Marlon, we couldn't wait to get him across. Uh, he, had, he had a massive year. Um, he, was, he was huge for us. Um, guys are already there, like Chris Jones, and, yeah, Jaffa, Surly and those guys, uh, Tyson and Matty got them, they, they got them there the year before, so it was great to play a couple of years with them. But, um, getting big, uh, big Troy Rose back, White Meninga, boys used to call him, he was a White Meninga, mate. Um, it's good to see him having a run today as well. Um, and then, uh, yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah, Chrissy, like I said before, he, like, someone's mentioned his old man tonight, Peter, Peter played here before, so I sort of went on that and I thought, you know, yeah, Chrissy, let me, yeah, an old man played here, you should come across in that a year, and, you know, well, that's probably the, the, the best phone call we ever made, but, um, that year was, you know, I think we, I think we learned a lot from the, from, from the previous year. We came out of the gates and, you know, we're undefeated. And, you know, we're looking like probably we're going to lose a game. We went to Canamble. You know, have, have, there's a lot of people in this crowd tonight know that Canamble's not the most happy of hunting grounds uh, for dangerous swans. And we went across there. And we took took our first loss for the year at Canamble. Probably the best thing that could happen to us. Um, you know, a bit of a reality check that year. Um, 
went on, I think we didn't, we didn't lose a game uh, for the rest of the year. Went into the, went into the semis, we had the opportunity to, to host the grand final. You know, when that semi meant that Danny Dill were going to host the grand final, and I don't know if uh, Danny Dill have hosted the grand final, and is that, is that correct? Can someone give me a thumbs up if they hadn't before then? But, um, you know, we're, we're all pretty pretty keen to get a grand final. We knew that if we could have got that grand final, it would have went a long way to us to winning. Um, yeah, it was a tough game. It, it, it went through it, it back and forth. When we got to the, got the full time, uh, we ended up getting a golden point, and uh, I go back to Ronnie Gallagher and let me kick the ball, so I couldn't. I was no chance kicking a field goal. Um, uh, Chrissy Walkham, best player that, you know, like I said, obviously of the year for us, but he's kicked a 40 20, he's got us down there, and we're walking down for the scrum, and everyone's talking about who's going to take the field goal. Who's going to take the field goal? Who's gonna, oh, you take it, oh, I'm going to take it, you take it, you take it. And Chrissy just walked up in the middle of us, he said, score the, didn't try. We packed the scrum down and we got Big Rosie there, a bit of a decoy, and we big cut out ball to, to Jaffa and he scored the try to win the game. And mate, it, was, it was probably more important than the grand final in that game just to get the chance to, to be able to play a grand final in front of in front of the hometown. Um, you know, I think like I said, that, that went a long way to us winning the grand final, but grand final day. Um, I mean, just uh, obviously living in Dubbo that time, coming out here, uh, you know, front gates of properties on the way, just green streams everywhere, the town had, you know, green everywhere, just walking down, I used to live in Digital Art Street, so I always walked the footy, you know, walking that hill, and used to just walking down the hill that day and just seeing green and white everywhere, cars, double parked, the hill full, um, you know, that, that image will, will be with me uh, forever. Uh, as, it, as it will be for, for the whole team. Um, and then, then you had, you had uh, Mark Dent and Dean Copeland uh, broadcasting the Valor Continuous Call Team for the day. I don't, I don't know how many names they got correct during the broadcast, but that's, uh, it's good to watch back and uh, listen to it. Uh, there was about 16 Walkins out there. And, uh, um, but yeah, unreal. Um, the game, you know, it started off First tackle of the game, I think, uh, Troy Rose came in and uh, good tackle and it was the, probably the sneakiest little, sneakiest little overhand, little tap on the chin for the front row and took him out for the game, which was probably went a long way to us winning the game, but don't like to admit it, but you know, from then, they, uh, you know, our line speed jumped out, they threw a pretty poor pass, Jack scored in the corner and sort of set the tone for the, for the day. Um, you know, we, we, we put a few of their players down. There was a, I think the Emerson on the field three times. And I remember Wack was a DJ the, for the grand final. And I think after the Emerson came in the third time, he, he played another one by some dust through the speakers. And uh, I think Kenny will have ever forgiven us for that. Um, uh, another one about the grand final, I remember that day is um, Cookie Large. Yeah. Uh, you know, most, most, most of the time, most of the times when you play footy, when you run on the field, you get the hairs standing up on the back of your neck, and uh, it's probably about five to go. And, and Cookie got into a bit of a stout. He got up on his toes. You don't want to be up on his toes, but you know, there wasn't much of a fight. But they gave him, they sent him off for the game. or gave him ten to only about eight to go, and he, and he ran off the field and he ran through all the native faithful. And he said, he goes, when I ran off that field, the hairs on the back of my neck were standing up. So. <laughs> He got to send off anyone as well, you know. Uh, but I, was, I was actually talking to Chris about the other day. That, that grand final day, it was just no one played a bad game. Everyone played well, you know. It was just the whole the whole season was a special feeling. I remember going to training and everyone just everyone wanted to go to training because you knew that's where your mates were and you, it's just where you wanted to be a couple of nights a week. It was, it was around the guys. Um, so to get that result that we did, it was just special, and you know, it's something we're all sitting up there together and they're all scattered through the through, through the crowd that night. But you know, it was super special. Um, you know, after you know, you know, I haven't played, I haven't played as many as many years of footy as a lot of people in this crowd have played for Dunn and Do. You know, play like, probably my five, fifth or sixth year playing now. Um, but I, you know, I was blessed to, to be able to coach the team through that through that era. You know, that, that, the club was already building. You know, they were building towards something, and I got the opportunity to come in and coach. Um, you know, and ended up winning a premiership after a couple of years. Um, but you know, the, the club itself—it's it's a club that 
uh, it just adopts people. You know, we, we, we're always we're a small town. We struggle to we struggle to get the players, and it's a hard slog for the community and everyone involved to try and keep a team on the field every year. And, but it's because of the people of the community of the town and the way that they are that makes people want to come, makes people when they come enjoy their footy and want to keep coming back. And I, and I think plenty of people here could attest to that. Um, I'm up here talking, but like I mentioned earlier, you know, Matty Court and, and, uh, and Tyson Sell and a few other people, um, you know, they're probably the reason that the club's still going. Um, you know, and, and, and the traditions continue, and you see Sammy Chris going down lane, they're the guys now that are, you know, recruiting and, and getting guys here. Um, so, you know, I hope that the, the club continues to stay successful a, a long time after this year. So, thank you. I just want to remind you about the uh, the league tag jerseys, that silent option. Tom, before you go, there's been a lot of talk tonight about people who contributed to the club. Uh, one of my earliest memories is seeing you in juniors playing in Dubbo, and your number one supporter was there, Dad Tony, and, and of course we all knew and loved Tony and what he contributed to the club. Um, he was here to see you in that, that great moment. Yeah, that was obviously special. Um, Dad was always sat at the table for for a lot of years before I coached, but to have him at the table there, yeah, just you know, Dad just loved whether it was me or my sisters. Dad just he loved family, so you know, for for his son to be able to to, to coach and win the grand final after the forty seven year drought, you know, it would have been the proudest day of his life, and uh, I'm you know super grateful that I was able to. You know, not me. The team was able to do that. He was able to. He was able to witness that. So you know, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Tony. And of course, the candle that was switched on earlier tonight is in memory of the Tony Yeos and, and uh, all of those people who've contributed over the years.